Hello and welcome to the specialist area at paediatrics. This is a video on epilepsy. So let's start with finding out what you already know. So question one, what are the two broad classifications of epileptic seizure? Is that generalised and specific, generalised and focal, tonic and clonic, or tonic and atonic? So a clue here is seizures are classified by where they originate from. So the answer is generalised and focal because they can either originate from all over the brain or in one specific area. So question two, seizures can affect which kind of neurological function? Is that A, sensory, B, motor, C, cognitive or D, autonomic or E, all of the above? So think about the symptoms a seizure can present with. So the answer is E, all of the above because the symptoms can come under any of those four areas. So question three, myoclonic seizure involves an increase in turn, a decrease in turn, jerking movements or slowed movements. So think about the difference between tonic, clonic and myoclonic. So the answer is C, jerking movements because a myoclonic seizure involves the muscles. So in this video we're going to cover what is epilepsy, symptoms and the history, investigations and, dif and differential diagnosis, clinical examination and OSCE tips, and finally a summary and MCQs. So what is epilepsy? So it's a brain disorder that predisposes a patient to have unprovoked seizures and it can be diagnosed as epilepsy when a child has two or more unprovoked epileptic seizures. So a seizure is a paroxysmal abnormality of motor, sensory, autonomic and cognitive function as we said before and it's due to transient brain dysfunction which means it comes and goes quite quickly. So an epileptic seizure is due to excessive and hypersynchronous electrical activity in neuronal networks in either all in generalised or parts in focal of cerebral cortex. But it's difficult to differentiate an epileptic seizure and a normal seizure because they present quite similarly. So epilepsy can present with different types of seizures, which as we said before, are classified as generalised or focal. So generalised seizures occur in both hemispheres of the cortex and usually cause loss of consciousness and they don't have warning signs. So these can be further split into absence seizures, which, which is a transient, so quite quick loss of consciousness, which comes on quite abruptly um, and there's very few motor symptoms, except the eyelids, eyelids may flicker. Um, a myoclonic seizure involves repetitive jerking like we said before and that can occur in the neck, the limbs or the trunk. A tonic seizure is just a generalised increase in tone in all the muscles. A tonic-clonic seizure involves a tonic phase like a tonic seizure but it's then followed by the clonic phase which is rhythmical contraction of the muscles. And finally an atonic seizure which involves a myoclonic jerk like a myoclonic seizure but that's then followed by a loss of tone which can cause a sudden fall to the floor. So focal seizures, um, they just occur in one hemisphere and originate from a small group of neurons um, and they can often be precipitated by aura and sensory symptoms. So they're classified by which lobe they occur in. So a frontal seizure generally presents with um, motor phenomena. A temporal seizure is auditory or sensory symptoms. An occipital seizure is visual symptoms such as hallucinations. And a parietal seizure is altered sensation on the opposite side of the body and often distorted body image. So when you're taking a history, you speak to obviously the child and the parent as you would in paediatrics, but you can also uh, speak to the eyewitness of a seizure, which, which may or may not be the parent. Um, and you can ask them if they have a video of a seizure, which some parents will take to show the doctor. Um, you ask about before the seizure, so ask about any triggers, any warning signs, um, what the mood of the child was like before the seizure um, and what was the child doing at the time. You ask about during the seizure, so did the child look blank, did they stare, did they lose consciousness, um, were they confused, what motor symptoms did they experience um, and did they change colour or did their breathing change at all. You also ask about after the seizure, so was the ch child tired after and how long did it take before they felt normal afterwards. Finally, ask about any impairments, any past medical history or any educational, psychological, social problems that the child may have. 
Uh, when you're investigating, you do an ECG because you want to rule out any cardiac causes, so a syncope from an arrhythmia. Uh, you'd also do an electroencephalogram or an EEG, which is required for the diagnosis of epilepsy because this is uh, a measure of the brain activity during a seizure. Uh, you could also do some brain imaging with MRI, CT and PET scans. And then other investigations you might do, so if the child's development is arrested, you might do some metabolic, metabolic investigations. Um, or if you suspect that there's a familial cause, you could do genetic testing. So what else could it be? So as we said before, it could be syncope from a cardiac arrhythmia, which is why we're doing ECG. It could be a metabolic condition because things like hyperglycemia present with um, seizures sometimes. It could be a migraine with aura. It could be a vascular condition. It could be a sleep disorder such as narcolepsy. It could be a movement disorder because there's lots of motor symptoms in the seizure. Uh, or it could be a psychiatric condition such as a panic attack. And finally, it could be a non-epileptic seizure like we mentioned at the beginning. So when you're examining the child, look out for any signs on the skin um, of a neurocutaneous syndrome. Look for uh, any signs in your neurological exam. Do a cardiovascular exam to rule out the arrhythmia causes. Uh, examine the child's mental state. And then just some tips for the OSCE. So make sure you get a full history from the patient. Um, ask what happened before, what they can remember during and after the seizure. Uh, obviously get your collateral history as you're doing peds, uh, speak to your eyewitness, um, describe what they saw, provide a video. Um, remember your cardio exam because you really need to rule out that cause. Um, and then just remember your general paediatric examination skills so you could use the child's teddy or make it like a game to keep the child engaged. So let's find out what you've learned. So question one. An occipital seizure presents with what kinds of symptoms? So is it auditory, visual, sensory or motor? So remember what the function of the occipital lobe of the brain is. So that's visual symptoms. Question two, what's the main feature of an absence seizure? So is that jerking movements, collapse, loss of consciousness, a change in muscle tone? So remember here that absence seizures start and end very quickly. So that's loss of consciousness, because it's a transient loss of consciousness. So question three, all of these could be differentials for epilepsy, except what? So is that a cardiac arrhythmia, a myocardial infarction, a migraine with aura, or narcolepsy? So think here about the main presenting symptoms of all these conditions. So that's a myocardial infarction, because that will be more chest pain than any kind of seizure or collapse. Thank you for watching.